Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, in today's video, we're gonna go over real quick the GM financial lease return procedure. Uh, I'm gonna do that with my wife's 2017 Chevrolet Volt, which is going back uh, as of today. So about a month and a half ago, uh, I got a letter in the mail and it's from GM Financial and it basically says, hey, your lease is coming due. We wanna help you with the return or purchase of this vehicle. So here's some instructions you can follow. And they give you one of these. Uh, which is basically a GM Financial leasing wear and tear card. But it shows you, uh, you got measurements on here for scratches. The little blue bar on the bottom is for tire depth. And you got a circle here for door dings and windshield cracks and stuff like that. Now this is so you can find out what you may be charged for as far as wear and tear on the vehicle. Now there are some normal wear conditions, which I'm gonna go through on this actual car uh, to show you what I shouldn't get charged for. And then there's some things that you might get charged for. You can also have an inspection set up. They offer you to call a third party company to do an inspection uh, because we do not do the inspection here at the dealership. By doing the inspection up front, where they come to either your house or your office, you'll know before you bring the car in what you might get charged for. So let's say you get a bill and it's gonna be $100 for a scratch. Well, you can bring it to your local garage and if your local garage says, oh, I could fix that for 50 bucks, well, you can do it that way, it'll save you some money. If you go to your local garage and they say it's gonna cost you 200, just send the car back and, and pay the 100 when you get that bill. So back to my wife's car. Here is uh, her 2017 Chevy Volt. Now, before I get into this, let me just tell you, my wife is a very good driver. She's an excellent driver. But every now and then you get a door ding. Every now and then the uh, cart, shopping cart return in the supermarket kind of jumps out at you and, and, it, and it hits your bumper. But uh, she's a very good driver and um, yeah, curbs too. Sometimes they just jump out at you. Let's take a look at it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my tires. Uh, we're gonna go to tire tread depth. We're gonna put this in the middle. Now the idea is that you don't see the blue bar. And as you can tell, I am borderline as far as a measurement. Depends on where I put it. If I put it in the middle, you don't see that blue bar at all. As I get to the outside, you're gonna see it a little bit more. Um, I don't know if that means they're gonna charge me for tires. Hopefully they don't. Uh, they're pretty much the same all around. The car does have 42, or actually just over 43,000 miles on it, uh, which is about the limit of tires, 45, 50,000 miles. Um, it's about when you would get charged. My previous cruise lease that we had, uh, I did not get charged for tires. That car also had 45,000 miles on it, where it was about the same. So I'm confident that I shouldn't get charged for, for tires. As we look at the windshield, I do have a chip here in the windshield. Now, if you put this up to it, you'll see that it fits within that half inch uh, circle for glass cracks and chips. So I'm good there. I shouldn't be charged for that. Walk around the car this way. This side looks good. No issues on the back. When I get over here, now she had gotten into an accident in this car. Somebody at T-Bone actually, they ran a stop sign and they hit the side of this vehicle. Uh, so it was repaired. And you know, after that, somebody actually dinged it and it took the paint right off. But if you look, this ding fits within the two inch circle. So we won't be charged for that. And this is just a scuff that's actually coming off. So I'll take care of that. Other than that, no dings, nothing on this side. Now here's where we get into an issue. So on the driver's side here, on the front bumper, we do have some scratches. It does fit within the four inch line. So I don't think I'll get charged for that. And I think I'm actually gonna go in the back and just see if I can kind of buff that out a little bit. Cause if I can do that and make it look less than it really is, uh, you know, they'll just hopefully bypass it. On the other side here, we got a little bit bigger of a scratch. This was that shopping cart return uh, at the supermarket. So, you know, this is a pretty good gouge and this is as well. Um, it's definitely bigger than four inches. So I may have an issue here. Same thing, I'm gonna buff out some of this little stuff. Uh, this way, hopefully they will be a little lenient on me. I almost forgot to mention wheels. Uh, so we got some scratching on this wheel. This is the back passenger side. And on the front driver's side, we also have some curb rash here as well. This is from, uh, you know, from those curbs that, that jump out at you. But let's go inside. Let's talk about the forms that are gonna be filled out once you get to the dealership. Let's say your lease is over, you're returning it to someone like myself at a dealership and you're not purchasing another vehicle. With GM Financial, all we do is really fill out an odometer statement. Uh, this is gonna disclose the amount of miles that you have on the car when you dropped it off. And basically it's your name, it's the vehicle info, the VIN number, uh, your, your address. We check off, we actually use three banks. We use GM Financial, US Bank, and Ally. And all three of them are pretty much the same procedure. Uh, it'll have the date you dropped it off. Now we fill this out, you sign it, we give you a copy and we send you on your way. Now the opposite of that is if you are purchasing or leasing a new vehicle uh, with the same dealership with Chevrolet. What General Motors is gonna do is we're gonna waive, if you go from GM Financial to another lease with GM Financial, they're gonna waive that disposition fee 
We're also gonna fill out one of these. This is a, a, a end of term loyalty form. So basically we put the old VIN number that's coming in, we put the new VIN number that's going out, and it'll waive up to $500 worth of excess wear and tear. So for instance, like we were talking earlier, those scratches and those few things I have on, uh, on my wife's car, I may not get charged for because even if I do get a bill, let's say for $300, well, this is gonna weigh 500 because I did in fact lease another GM vehicle. The third form we would fill out, and this is really just dealership specific. This is something we do. Uh, we create an early lease return policy form. This basically just tells the customer that, hey, listen, we're returning your car. Uh, you have no payments remaining, or if you have payments remaining and we're paying them as part of the new deal, we would list that on here. Uh, but you're responsible if you went over your mileage, any excess wear and tear, any disposition fees, that sort of thing. So it's a form that we created just to kind of take the liability away from us if you did in fact get a bill down the road for any kind of damage or anything on that car, that it's not our responsibility to pay for it. Once that stuff is done, uh, you know, we make a key tag here at our store. We put one of these uh, New Jersey required stickers on it, which says it's not ready for sale. And uh, at that point we park it in our lower lot and we wait for the inspector to come in. Uh, you would then leave. But before you go, make sure you get everything out of the car. Okay, so before you leave that dealership, take your license plates off the vehicle. You know, those license plates have the bank's information on a registration, but your name is attached to those. You wanna make sure you surrender them back to your state. Also, look for your easy pass. Make sure you have your garage door opener. Anything that you may leave in the vehicle that's kinda of out of sight, out of mind, make sure you grab that. Check your center armrest, check your glove box. Um, leave the owner's manuals in the glove box. I, right now I don't have mine, I left them at home, so I'm gonna bring those in and I'll drop them in the car tomorrow. But you wanna make sure that you, you have everything out of it because once you return that car and that car goes to storage or inspected, uh, you may not ever see it again. So if something's left in it, it might be gone forever. Another thing that's great to do is to return your, your vehicle or your computer system to factory settings. Okay, so most radios have a, a setting feature where you can return to factory spec. This way it will take out your Bluetooth devices. If the car had navigation, it'll delete any of the addresses that were saved in there and just bring it back to where nothing of your private information is anywhere in that computer in the car. Last thing you can do if you feel the need is you can take a couple pictures of the vehicle. This way you have a record of what it looked like the day you returned it. You can do that for the odometer statement as well for the miles. And I am actually personally gonna do it for this charge cord because this charge cord is $625 and I don't want it to all of a sudden not be in the car and then I get a bill for it. Once you've done all that sort of stuff, it's time to say goodbye uh, to the vehicle that hopefully served you well and got you to your destination safely. And uh, you know, enjoy the new car that you replaced it with. Uh, if you have any questions at all about the lease return process with GM Financial, uh, this is similar with Ally and US Bank. We deal with all three. Uh, I'm sure it's probably very similar with other brands as well. But if you have any questions, just put them in the comments down below. I'll see you there and uh, have a great day.